Okay, well, this morning we're going to turn back to Mark's Gospel in chapter 1, and we're going to continue to consider the encounter that takes place between uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and this leper that we find in those verses that we read a little earlier from verse 40 onwards. Now, last week you may recall that we started to look at this encounter and we thought a little of uh, the leper as we find him in verse 40. He's a man who's in a desperate state. He's a man who has a desperate cry and a desperate plea to make. And we, find, we found in that verse that he was granted a gracious audience by Christ, as Christ stands to receive him. So having presented himself and laid his case before Christ, how does Christ respond to this man? Well, we find the answer to that in verse 41, where we read, Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. What we have in this verse as Christ responds to this leper is a glorious and a, a, a wonderful insight into the very heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a heart that has a love for the needy. Then Jesus moved with compassion. He saw the state this man was in. He saw the torn clothing, the shaved head and the disfigured body. He heard his cry for help. And the heart of Christ was moved by what he saw and what he heard. We thought at the Bible study last week of those words in Matthew 9 and verses 35 to 38, where we are told again that Christ was moved with compassion. As he looked upon the crowds and he saw that they were wearied and they were scattered, that they were a people who were shepherdless when he came into contact with them. And it's this love of Christ, his movement with compassion that lies at the root of the gospel. It is truly, as we read in that last hymn, a love unknown. A love that is shown to the loveless that they might lovely be. It's a love that recognises the magnitude and the enormity of humanity's fall. It's a love that sees the condition that humanity has fallen into, that hears the cry of despair and is moved by it. It was love that moved the Father to send the Son into the world into a world that had rejected him. It was love that caused the Son to willingly and obediently come. It was love that made the Son willing to go to the cross and suffer. And it's love that sends the Holy Spirit to dwell in the hearts of sinners. This is the God who declares himself in the Bible. The God that is seen in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the God that the church is called to proclaim. To those who feel as this man felt. And who understand their need as this man understood his need. It's love. It's a heart of love that is seen by those who come in despair to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now we're not told here in this passage that there were tears in the eyes of Christ. But if you have ever been moved with compassion, then you will know that tears are how that compassion is expressed. It's an involuntary reaction of the body when we are moved by the suffering of others. I expect there were tears in the eyes of Christ as he looked upon this man. I expect this man would have seen those tears that welling of the eyes. He would have seen tears before. He would have seen them in the eyes of his family and in the eyes of his friends as this diagnosis of leprosy was confirmed. He would have seen them in the eyes of his family as they came to visit him, appropriately socially distanced as was required as they saw his condition worsen. And as he looked into the eyes of Christ, as he implores him for cleansing, what an encouragement those tears, that welling of the eyes, would have been. Firstly, Jesus allows him to approach. And there is hope in his heart as he does so. Now as he kneels before Christ and implores him for mercy, he sees not the hard heart of the Pharisee or the scribe that would look on him with disdain and disgust and would judge him, but he sees a face that tells him, here is a man who loves him and feels for him. The Lord Jesus Christ has a way of encouraging his people, even in the most difficult and the most traumatic of circumstances. And it's found as he expresses his love to them. It may be from the words of Scripture, it may be the line or a verse of a hymn. It may be through the conversation and fellowship of another believer. It may be something proclaimed from the pulpit. The circumstances will remain unchanged. But the love of Christ is sensed. And as a result, encouragement is given. This morning... Whether we are burdened by our sin and are seeking Christ for mercy, or whether we know the forgiveness of Christ but are struggling in the way that we have been called to go, or whether we are struggling against the attacks of the evil one, whether we're struggling with temptation, we can be assured that as we cry to Christ, He will make His love known to us. And that love will encourage and strengthen. Even as he looked into the face of Christ, this man's leprosy was still there. As he saw the compassion of Christ, he remained a leper. But what an encouragement it was for him. You know, this is what the church is called to do. To show love To a world that lies in spiritual darkness. So that those who are brought to conviction of sin may be encouraged. To seek mercy at the feet of Christ. To show the love of Christ to each other within the church. That we may be bound together in him. As brothers and sisters, as family. This is where the love of Christ leads. It leads to a love for him. It leads to a love for those that he loves. It leads 
to a love for those who need his gospel. The heart of Jesus Christ is demonstrated to this man as he is moved with compassion. What an encouragement it was for this gentleman and what an encouragement it is for those who see it in Christ. Secondly, the heart of Christ is shown towards this man in that he comforts the needy. And Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him. Having encouraged this man with a demonstration of his love, Jesus Christ comforts him. Almost certainly this will have been the first time this man had felt the touch of another human being since he became a leper. What a comfort a touch can be. A gentle tap on the shoulder or on the back. A holding of the arm. An arm around the shoulder or an embrace will convey so much we see it in children, don't we, in young people. How they need the comfort of a parent's touch when they are hurt or scared. We see it in grieving families as they support one another with embraces in times of bereavement. We see it on the deathbeds of many as a hand is held what a comfort a simple touch is. But notice, even more than that, Jesus Christ stretches out his hand and he touches this man while he is still a leper. Touching a leper under the law of Moses, made you unclean. If we can put it this way, by touching him, Christ made himself like this man. We've noted as we've gone through this chapter how again and again Christ uses visual means to teach of the great work he will do. And as he identifies with this man and his disease, as he touches this unclean man and himself under the law becomes unclean, so he will identify with his people and with their sin. So that Paul could write to the church at Corinth, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now Jesus Christ remained free from leprosy even after he touched this man, although under the law he was deemed to be unclean. And in the same way, although he is without sin, under the law he is deemed guilty because he takes the sins of his people, even as his own. Although, of course, he remains himself free from sin. And this morning we have in this little encounter a reminder that whatever circumstances we are found in, if we are his, then he will identify with us in them he is our great high priest that we read together in that first hymn who in the days of feeble flesh poured out his cries and tears and in his measure feels afresh what every member bears what a comfort what a comfort to know that the lord of glory who has all of heaven and all of earth at his command. 
that the king of kings who holds all authority and all power knows and understands what his people are going through. That he is able to stretch out his hand and touch them in their uncleanness, in their sin, in their folly, in their temptation. Not in judgment, not in anger, not in rebuke, but in love. To lift and to hold and to carry. This is how Jesus Christ deals with those who come to him in a desperate state. This will be the testimony of every one of his children. He is the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations. And you know, the comfort of Christ is a tangible comfort. It has a clear effect on those to whom it is directed. This man felt it physically. We see other examples of it. We see it in the face of Stephen as he is martyred. We hear it in the hymns of Paul and Silas in the Philippian prison. For some of us, we have sensed it on the deathbeds of his saints. It's a comfort that removes fear and doubt. It's a comfort that brings peace and assurance. Do we know the comfort of Christ? Can we look back on times when in the darkness of distress we have felt his presence and it has calmed us? You know, one of the blessings of corporate worship is the promise of Christ's presence. What a comfort to be able to meet together as we do this morning. Knowing that as we do, Christ sees our condition. He knows how we have come into this building. He knows the burdens and the stresses and the concerns that we carry. And even this morning, he is able to stretch out his hand and touch us and comfort us. This man is given hope as Christ receives him. He is encouraged as Christ is moved by his need. He is comforted as Christ stretches out his hand and touches him. The heart of Christ towards this man. And then the heart of Christ is seen in his desire to relieve the needy. Jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. You know, for all the hope, for all the encouragement and for all the comfort that this man had received from the Lord Jesus Christ, it is these five words above all else that he needed to hear. I am willing, be cleansed. The heart of Christ is revealed by his words. You notice, Jesus doesn't say, I must cleanse you. Jesus doesn't say, I can cleanse you, or I have to cleanse you. He says, I am willing. It is his desire to heal this man. It is his desire and his longing to relieve him from his distress. This is the case for all who seek relief from Jesus Christ. They need an answer. And Christ delights in giving one an answer to their need. You know, in my work, currently, we're assisting many businesses uh, who are seeking to secure government-backed loan funding. Um, the government announced these loans uh, a little while ago, and when they did, it gave many businesses hope. You approach various lenders, 
And they encourage the applications and are enthusiastic to have them and to sell the products that they have available. And the client's encouraged. Until the bank agrees the loan and until the funds are received, the distress and the fear of bankruptcy or liquidation remains with the company. The hope of what the government announced and the encouragement of the banks is not enough. They need the funds. While the banks will grant relief on the basis of a set of criteria that seeks to calculate their risk of loss. Jesus Christ granted this man relief from his disease without asking him for anything. In many ways, it was easy. All Christ had to do was speak the word. Now when we come to the needs of sinners, he is just as willing, he is just as able, he is just as desirous to grant relief from the burden of sin and from the spiritual distress. But there is so much more that he must do for the sinner. There is a penalty to be paid and the one who comes to Christ has nothing to give and nothing to offer. And every time the Lord Jesus Christ hears and answers a sinner's pleading for mercy. Every time their, their cries for forgiveness are heard with, with, answered with, I am willing, be cleansed. The cross of Calvary comes into view. And we're reminded that Jesus Christ was willing to suffer in the place of his people. He was willing to endure humiliation and mocking on behalf of those who cry to him. He was willing to be scourged and beaten. He was willing to be rejected and murdered. On behalf of those who have nowhere else to go, and whose burden of guilt is too great to bear. And he went through all these things willingly. That he might redeem a people for himself. The heart of Christ is revealed by his words. It was his desire to heal this man, to relieve him from his distress, just as it is his desire to relieve every one of those for whom he gave his life and to bring them into his presence. Every time you go to Christ, whether you go as a sinner burdened and distressed by guilt and condemnation, whether you go as a saint burdened by distress in the spiritual struggles that you face in this world. The answer to the cries and the pleas will be the same. I am willing. I am willing to support you. I am willing to strengthen you. I am willing to bless you. I am willing to draw near. I am willing to keep. I am willing to preserve. I am willing to guide. I am willing to comfort. I am willing to do all these things that I may bring you into the joy and the peace of my eternal presence. And you know, this is the key thought this morning. We can come to church or we can come to the scriptures and we can have hope as we see in them the character and the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can be comforted by the promises that he gives. We can be encouraged by the invitations. But if we've never heard him say to us individually and personally that he is willing, be cleansed. Then all the hope 
and all the comfort and all the encouragement will count for nothing. We continue to live in our sins if that is the case. We continue to be found outside of his kingdom if that is the case. We continue to be on that broad road that leads to judgment and destruction. It is the word of Christ spoken into the heart of a sinner that above all else is needed. And if this morning you are a sinner and you have not heard the voice of Christ speaking forgiveness to you, then follow the example of this leper. Kneel before him, implore and plead with him that he might answer your greatest need. And for those of us who can look back and say, yes, Christ has answered my pleas and Christ has answered my cries with words of peace and words of mercy, and words of forgiveness. Then what a picture we have here in this little episode of the depth of his love for us, of his willingness to act for our good. We need never to fear that his welcome will change. He has already done all that is required to secure your long-term welfare and your eternal security. Held in his hands, you cannot be removed from his heart, from his love, from his presence, or from his will. And the day will come when he will relieve you of every sin and of every struggle and of every distress and of every pain A day will come when the desires of your heart will be only for him. When sin will be no longer known. When you are beyond the reach of Satan and temptation. And in the glory of his presence, you will praise and worship in joy and delight. And this will come upon you because of his great love that moved him to compassion that caused him to stretch out and reach out to you and that made him willing to cleanse you then Jesus moved with compassion stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him I am willing be cleansed This man is given hope as Christ receives him. He is encouraged as Christ is moved by his need. He is comforted as Christ stretches out his hand and touches him. And he is relieved as Christ answers his cry. May the heart of Christ be known by us each. Amen.